Welcome to Illuminations, a program of study designed to guide you through the basic tools one needs to become a better painter. We intend to shed light on the theories, tools, and techniques that provide this foundation. Many of the subjects we'll explore seem to confuse even experienced painters when they're trying to do everything at once. Every stroke applied to a painting must exhibit the knowledge of composition, color, value, edge, linear and aerial perspective. That's a tall order for a beginner, yet that's exactly what many try to do when they start painting. Actually, all these concepts are simple to understand when they're studied out of the context of trying to execute a painting. Join me for the entire Illumination series for a good basic introduction to the theory, tools, methods, and techniques every painter can use. I've taken the liberty of drawing my two subjects prior to the start of the video using techniques fully explained in VI-9, drawing the head in oil. Rather than trying to put this new color over the old one, I'll scrape off the first color with a palette knife to remove the excess paint before laying down new paint. This process of scraping and repainting has a name. It's called a boche a French word for this very process. Bouguereau and Sargent both used it as a corrective method of painting. Even the plane that curves around the brow bone has the same dark light pattern and the entire area takes on more feeling of form. To really bring the eye to life, add the catch light. I use the sharpened end of my brush handle to pick up a dot of paint and deposit it in the 11 o'clock position on the iris at the juncture of the pupil and the iris, never in the center of the pupil. I'm going to go ahead and put the eyebrow in using the dark color from the hair. The light passes right across the brow bone here, so I'm going to skip this high point and paint the brow down into the shadow. This helps give the illusion of light passing over the form. Another important dark reference is the dark at the hair right at the temples. I'm going to strike in these areas right away, so I'll have them to work against when I go back to the light planes on the face. Working in this very close value range on the face, I'll need all the help I can get to judge the light values properly, so I'm going to go ahead at this point and put in the complete dark value of the hair. Now begins the refining process. I'm picking up a cool light value to lay in some of the lightest values I see on Tanisha's face. This plane right under the eye captures the light from my cool light source. This is also the color of the highlight that I see on the tip of the nose. There's also a light at the top of the bridge of the nose, but not that far down. The light bounces off strongly from the brow bone and up the forehead. It kind of trails off up toward the hair. The final touch is the catch light in the eye, again painted with the sharpened end of my brush handle. I'm going to move on now to do a little bit on the nose while I have a few more minutes left during this model session and I'll come back to that other eye later. If you don't relate the hair by color to the face then your portrait subjects will appear to have wigs or fake hair. Natural hair color always coordinates with the flesh color it grows out of so never think that you can premix a color for just blondes, brunettes, or redheads and have those colors work for all possible models. Everyone's hair has its own unique flesh color that it coordinates with. You can see the rich color that's emerging through this layering process. Although I have no medium in the paint I'm laying on right now, only because I want to paint it darker with the fewest number of layers, it's still considered a glaze because the paint is transparent in its pure form. After putting the light on Becky's collar, I see that the white in Tanisha's eyes needs to be restated, 
so I'll use the same middle value from the collar to do that. Because the flesh surrounding her eyes is so dark, this value seems very light by comparison. And one final stroke of dark to shade the white of the eye as it goes up under the lash line. And I'll call this demonstration finished. Join me in this continuing series to learn the fundamentals and basic theory and concepts of all types of painting in the king of mediums, oils. Until then, enjoy painting ethnic flesh tones in all their many colors.